This film on the evolution of stapling and surgery is a tribute to the Hungarian surgeons Hudel and von Petz, who pioneered in the use of staples early in this century. We used the von Petz instrument in gastric surgery during my training over 30 years ago. While studying with Professor Nakayama of Japan, I found his instruments very efficient and useful. The real popularity of stapling came with the development of the U.S. Surgical Corporation's instruments and with the educational efforts of this company. With their continuing research and development and surgeons' innovative uses of these instruments, improvement in our operative techniques is inevitable. stapling in surgery begins where many historical events in the world of medicine have taken place. Budapest. This is the charming city on the Danube where Semmelweis worked in the 1860s. Today he is immortalized by the university which bears his name. The Semmelweis Museum stands near his birthplace. Included in the museum's collection is the original surgical stapling device designed by Homer Hudl, a famed Hungarian surgeon who worked here at the turn of the century. Hudl was chief surgeon here at St. Stephen's Hospital and later at St. Rocca's Hospital, where Semmelweis also once worked and taught. He earned the name Paganini of the Night. A plaque commemorating his 10,000th operation is still on display in his operating room in the Pajor Sanatorium. His extraordinary surgical skills attracted a large number of foreign visitors who paid a fee for the privilege of watching him operate. He used bleeding corpses, cadavers with dilute ox blood pumped into the arteries to teach his students surgical technique. One of his patients presented him with this version of Rembrandt's anatomy lesson, substituting his face for that of the teacher, a flattering joke. He drove one of the first motor cars in Budapest, which was given to him by one of his grateful American visitors. He enjoyed the Budapest nightlife in the 20s and frequented such famous spots as the Café New York, now the Café Hungaria, and the famous Gaylord Bass. His dining table was supplied from the elegant indoor market. In 1907, the idea occurred to him that a mechanical instrument which would place rows of metal staples into the walls of hollow organs might prevent spillage of gastric and intestinal contents during surgery. He presented the thought to his friend Victor Fisher, whose family had designed and manufactured surgical instruments for five generations. In 1908, Fisher presented Hoodle with an ingenious prototype of the instrument. It was a crushing staple forceps with a crank system which delivered a quadruple row of U-shaped steel staples, very similar to those used today. The Fisher Hoodle Stapler was an instant success, and his company, Peter Fisher and Associates, manufactured and sold units, some of them still in clinical use as late as the mid 1930s. But like most inventions, it was to be replaced by a better machine. Oladar von Petz, the son of a prominent surgeon in Yor, near Budapest, had become interested in the problem of mechanical suturing. His father had established a clinic which is still in use today and encouraged the young surgeon in his pursuits. At a meeting of the Hungarian Surgical Society in late 1921, Hüttel first saw the instrument developed by von Petz. Everybody expected a heated debate. Hüttel sat down next to the nervous von Petz, tried the new machine on his spectacle case, and after inspecting the suture line carefully, he announced, it is better. He congratulated the young surgeon and left the room. After that meeting, the Hoodle Fisher stapler was no longer manufactured. Von Petz saw his instrument become the world standard. He continued his practice in Yor until he died in 1956. Several different instruments were manufactured after Von Petz, but none were widely used until the early 1950s. Professor Nakayama of Chiba University in Japan modified the Von Petz instrument to make it easier to load and less cumbersome. He developed a complete line of these instruments, but they still had the disadvantages of tissue crushing and the need for reinforcement with sutures. Paralleling the work of Nakayama, 
Work on improvements of these instruments was going on at the Institute for Experimental Surgical Apparatus in Moscow. The name of Dr. Androsov is intimately associated with the development of these devices. In 1964, coincidence brought about a new turn of events. A young entrepreneur named Leon Hirsch visited a friend who was a patent broker in New York. He happened to see a rather primitive looking instrument on his friend's desk. He asked its purpose and was told it was something the Russians were using to suture people with instead of silk and catgut. Hirsch was intrigued by the idea, but also soon recognized its shortcomings. It took two hours to assemble and load, and each tiny staple had to be loaded with tweezers. A solution struck Hirsch almost immediately. Why not a disposable cartridge for the staples? He made a prototype out of balsa wood in the basement of his New Jersey home. He was introduced to two surgeons from Johns Hopkins, Dr. Felician Steichen and Dr. Mark Ravage who brought the instrument to the United States from the Soviet Union. Both had used the Soviet instrument and showed keen interest in Hirsch's prototype. They agreed to test the stapler when it was in finished form. Hirsch and his associate, Turi Josephson, worked closely with Ravitch and Steichen, testing and developing the instruments. Hirsch was able to finish the project, obtain financing, and start a new company, United States Surgical Corporation high-quality instruments were being manufactured in the late 1960s. New instruments were developed, such as a skin and fascia stapler. Significant advances were represented in the auto suture product line. Absorbable staples were developed by the U.S. Surgical Corporation to be used in areas where steel staples may not be as suitable such as in abdominal and vaginal hysterectomy and surgery of the bladder. One of the company's most important contributions has been in the area of the education of surgeons and operating room nurses in the use of stapling devices. At the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine, doctors Ravitch and Steichen have produced over 20 workshops in the use of staplers and surgery. They are also the authors of the most comprehensive work on the subject of stapling and surgery. Today, U.S. Surgical is the largest manufacturer of surgical stapling instruments in the world, and with its innovative and active research and development department, has also developed the quality assurance equipment and procedures required to guarantee the quality of each individual finished product. Seeing these products reminds us of their history, of Semmelweis and Hoodle, of Fisher and Von Petz, and their native Hungary and of the many others whose work has helped produce these fine instruments. They have not only allowed us to improve and refine our surgical techniques, they have benefited mankind. <laughs>